If you have not already done so, I encourage you to Google the name Father Nathan Monk and see this YouTube video of this man of the church standing before the Pensacola City Commission and making a very impassioned and quite eloquent uh, defense of the First Amendment. One of the key statements that he makes in that uh, very eloquent, very articulate speech is that citizens of this country have the right to protest and petition their government without fear of being arrested. Let me restate that. Citizens of the United States of America should have the right to petition their government without fear of being arrested. It is terribly, terribly, frighteningly ironic that this message that he was delivering to the city council that an American citizen should have the right to protest or petition his government without fear of being arrested nearly gets him arrested. Now the video is only about five minutes long and I quite encourage you to watch all five minutes of it to listen to what this preacher is saying as he stands before city council and he does so following all rules of decorum he does so following all rules of procedure. This was not a wild protest. This was not someone who was out of order. He was petitioning his government in precisely the manner and form in which they require the rules that were prescribed for him to do so. But if you fast forward to the about 2 minute and uh, 38 minute mark, you will see that as this priest makes a very articulate and frankly well supported factually and legally uh, argument that what had occurred previously in the city council meeting was a gross violation of the rights of those who stood before him he was uh, shouted down by members of the city commission those that were elected, those public officials that swore an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. And what happened is when he did that, you will see officers, police officers, stand behind him and they appear to be close to arresting him, arresting him for doing that which he was there to speak out against, and that is exercising his First Amendment rights. That video certainly uh, will be another one of those iconic images that uh, describe the growing totalitarianism that is wiping our wealth all across this state and all across this country. That image of this priest standing before his government, surrounded by law enforcement, about to be arrested and taken away, should join those other images, like Scott Olson, the soldier out in California who was shot in the head by paramilitary forces. It should join images like the UC Davis protesters who were sprayed like they were cockroaches or insects by paramilitary forces. It should join images like that of the white-shirted New York City police uh, superior uh, Tony Baloney who uh, likewise sprayed innocent protesters. It should join the images of all of the Occupy Wall Street protesters who up in New York City were subject to arrest because they dared to stand up and speak their mind freely. There's another image that we need to be familiar with and that's much closer to home here. I'm reading from a post that uh, came out yesterday. There's apparently a young protester by the name of Summers who uh, was protesting here in Tampa. Timothy Summers was his name. He was arrested uh, for standing in a public park and demonstrating, exercising his First Amendment rights. Um, but what is so disturbing about this particular incident is according to this press release, this young protester apparently will be rotting in jail here in Hillsborough County until March 2012. Let's be clear about that. Here is a young gentleman, I don't know how old he is and I don't know anything about his background, but the press release reports that Timothy Summers, who was arrested on December 2nd here in Tampa, has been held over for trial and he risks being held until March 2012 for daring to stand up and protest. Now, this is something that we must all pay attention to because if this young gentleman 
uh, risks staying in prison until 2012 because he dared to stand up and speak for the rights of all of us, then this is certainly a human rights issue that is of a magnitude that is extraordinary. And the fact that it is happening right here in this community is something that we must all pay attention to. I encourage uh, attorneys, those who have sworn an oath to protect the Constitution of the United States of America, those who took an oath to not turn away from their responsibilities to protect and defend those uh, who, who don't have means to pay for their defense. I strongly encourage all of you to Google that name, Timothy Summers, reach out to the Occupy Tampa folks and see what can be done to protect and stand up for this young gentleman. As I've uh, come aware of these issues, I started reading about uh, this soldier, Bradley Manning, who was uh, affiliated or associated with the WikiLeaks uh, uh, issue some months ago. This young gentleman uh, was a security analyst apparently working in the Army and he apparently disclosed uh, quite a bit of information to the WikiLeaks organization. Um, it is possible, perhaps even probable, that uh, he, by leaking this information, put the lives of soldiers and thousands of people across this globe potentially at risk. I uh, am a huge supporter of the United States military and of our government, but what I'm reading about this man's treatment by our United States military here on United States soil is very disturbing to me. Now, you won't find any uh, description of this treatment in the national media, in our domestic media sources, but if you Google that name and look abroad, particularly to some of the stories that are being reported in the Guardian UK, you will uh, hear descriptions of most inhumane treatment that are uh, being perpetrated uh, upon this soldier. Now, again, I'm not defending what might be treasonous conduct on behalf of this gentleman, but if the reports are correct about what is happening to him, then we all need to pay very close attention because it has dramatic implications to all of us. Now, as with most stories, what is being reported, um, in, in especially the very small amount that's being reported here domestically in the United States of America, is only a very small part of the story. But reading carefully the Guardian UK description of what's happening to this gentleman, the, uh, the torture of this gentleman behind bars in military custody, is quite disturbing. Um, again, it, it appears that what he did might have put soldiers at risk and might have in fact uh, impacted the domestic security of the United States of America. But it also seems apparent that um, what was occurring up until the time he started releasing these things was likewise uh, very problematic. In fact, it was clear, according to the reports, that he was becoming uh, a bit unglued, a bit unstable, and had we had our military been paying attention to this, we might have headed off the problems that existed and occurred. I, I, I'm taking a particular interest in all these cases which demonstrate um, dramatic uh, violation of civil liberties and the inhumane treatment of individuals who are standing up and protesting because I too have suffered um, some of the same persecutions that we see illustrated, particularly the Father Nathan Manning incident, it, it strikes a chord with me. In the same way that this preacher stood up in a public forum and was obeying the rules of decorum and procedure and making his protest and petition before his government, I too uh, stood before a government not so long ago following the rules of procedure and decorum making argument about the larger issues and making protest about what was occurring in government. And like this gentleman, I suffered the um, crush of the boot of our government. I continue to pay the price for doing that. I am not exactly certain what my final penalty will be, but I find it significant to note that as an American citizen, by daring to speak out against the injustices that I see before me, I suffer consequences. And 
every American needs to understand that in this country today, if you dare to speak out in protest, if you dare to petition your government for grievances, you risk persecution. You risk the punishment for opening your mouth. This is something which is repugnant to the very basics of the Constitution of the United States of America. Keep in mind that when our founding forefathers drafted the Bill of Rights, they chose to make the First Amendment the very first right that we all had. And yet too many of us are standing aside as those rights, especially that most important and basic right, the First Amendment, is crushed and destroyed by the oppressive forces that are aligned against us. There are totalitarian forces, the government of the United States of America, the government at state level, the government at city level, which are working in concert with the military, with the police and law enforcement forces to crush protest, to harangue protesters, to rein in those who dare to speak out. One thing that you all need to keep in mind is that those people that are speaking out right now are doing it not for any personal gain. They're doing it, in many cases, out of a sense of patriotism, out of a sense of duty to all of America. And one of the things that makes me and, and others increasingly frustrated is those that watch these blogs and read these stories and read the newspaper accounts and articles um, do just that. They simply read, they simply watch, and they do nothing more. I am issuing a charge to all of you and to all Americans, in fact, and that is to become aware of what is happening around you. To Google those terms, Father Nathan Monk. To Google the term National Defense Authorization Act of 2012 and Section 1031. To pay attention to what's happening to your rights all across this country and to do something about it. And what can you do? You can share these stories on Facebook. You can share these stories on your email and Twitter accounts. You can engage your friends, your family in conversations. You know, these are difficult and uncomfortable conversations, certainly. But as we gather together around the Christmas tree and around the Christmas table, and as we gather together at uh, Hanukkah celebrations, it is absolutely incumbent upon every single one of you to be engaging all of your friends, all of your family, and all of your co-workers in very real and very hard conversations about what is happening in this country. You can no longer sit aside and have these pleasant conversations about what you're doing for the holiday or what your children are doing in school. You need to be having very hard, very tough conversations about this country that is crumbling around you, about the crush of the totalitarian government that is crushing out dissent all around you. You must all begin to take responsibility for what you have allowed to occur, what we all have allowed to occur in this country, and that is a government that has become increasingly powerful and that is squelching out protest and stomping on protesters. You must all begin to ask, what are the consequences if this is allowed to occur? What is the consequences if this is allowed to continue? I can tell you that the consequences are a dramatic, continuing destruction of your civil rights and basic personal liberties. And so as you stand there together at Christmas time and Hanukkah, as you gather together with your family and friends to celebrate the holidays, I want you to consider what this world will be like when this crush of the totalitarianism regimes continues to exacerbate and continues to get worse. Don't just sit back and enjoy a happy holiday season without considering what happens when this continues going forward. Google all those names. Continue in the debate and discussion among your friends and family. And then resolve yourself to take action to stand up and protest and protect this country from the evil and the ills that are making their way from one end of this coast all the way to the other. 